fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I specifically have not mentioned in my salutation Dr. Cyrus Bontevassel and our newest investor, developer, and citizen here in St. Kitts and Nevis, um, Mr. Abbas Faham, for him, sorry, because in a way they are our special guest this morning. We here in St. Kitts and Nevis are always very pleased to welcome investors and developers to our shores. But when two of these are recent citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis who have been awed and inspired by what this country has to offer, we give them, in particular, special recognition for the confidence that they demonstrate in their new country, our country, in our citizens, and of course, in the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. Today, I emphasize that St. Kitts and Nevis continues its forward movement. And we continue to do so on many fronts. We continue first and foremost by ensuring that conditions and divisions of vision, of competence and capability continue to play a pivotal role in the social and economic achievement of our, an advancement, I would say, of our federation. We continue by ensuring that the implementation of these individuals' vision redound to the benefit of nationals in the construction trades, redound to the benefit of nationals in air conditioning and refrigeration services in accounting services, in excavation services, in hospitality services, and the range of other services, the combination of which is key to the transformation of unique ideas into viable, functioning, vibrant realities. Mr. Farron Lawrence, an accomplished and a truly outstanding son of the soil is such a visionary. And prime residence condominium project, of which Mr. Lawrence is the developer and investor representative, is such an idea. Indeed, we understand a moment ago that some 150 persons will be employed here during construction. And yet again, another 100 more being employed on an ongoing basis post-construction. Mr. Golam Abbas Fahim and Dr. Cyrus Montevassel are the investors we have been told in Prime Developments Limited. And I should mention here that Mrs. Fahim and Montevassel have become citizens, again, I am mentioned, of St. Kitts and Nevis as well. Our country, ladies and gentlemen, offers an unending stream of exquisitely beautiful vistas, no matter where in our federation one may be. And this Half Moon Bay area, specifically the area designated as Half Moon Phase 4 development area, we will agree, is no exception at all. This explains why so many local and international interests who are involved in the hospitality industry 
see St. Kitts and Nevis as a prime location for the establishment or the expansion of their businesses. In addition, socio-political and economic tumult is now the order of the day in many areas around the world. And so the focused, disciplined, high competence governance profiles that St. Kitts and Nevis has successfully developed has served as a definite magnet where local and international investors are concerned. A moment ago, you heard Mr. Fahim himself enumerate a number of the specific factors that were considered in attracting him here to this country for investment. In fact, a few, a few months ago, when we first met, he not only interviewed me in terms of what was the future prospects for St. Kitts and Nevis, but he traveled, I understand, to St. Martin, and many, and, and, and maybe many other areas looking at other islands to seek opportunities for investment. And naturally, he returned here because the factors which he outlined were responsible in motivating him in making that final decision that St. Kitts and Nevis was the place for his investment. <laughs> and so I say that regardless of how appealing St. Kitts and Nevis might be, however, the decision of who does and does not invest in St. Kitts and Nevis remains in the hands of our government. And in order to ensure that St. Kitts and Nevis continues to be the gem that it is, my government insists on the most demanding due diligence procedures to be followed. It was just last week, Wednesday, I was in London addressing an international conference of about 170 persons, conference that was being held on global residence and citizenship. And there I spoke of the quality of the investor, the quality of the citizen that St. Kitts and Nevis was attracting. And I made it clear that despite the competition which we know is presently unfolding in neighboring Antigua, in Grenada, possibly in Barbados, in Malta. Malta was launching a program the very next day in the same hotel where our conference was being held. I made the point to the conference attendees that St. Kitts and Nevis is not in any way perturbed because not only are we able to insist on the highest standards of due diligence in terms of selecting our citizens, but that when they come, they come not only for the initial investment that provides citizenship, but they come back and do a second and third investment because of the quality of this country and the quality of the people of this country who are their fellow citizens. <laughs> Dr. Cyrus Montevassel, this is in fact his second after his primary and first investment as a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is what we are seeing the quality of the people who are becoming our citizens is unmatched. And that is why I say to you today, despite the competition that there is, St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program remains the number one 
sought after global program. The longest serving, but it is also of the highest quality. And that is why we are confident that our economic development thrust using this model will continue. And in keeping with this, we therefore warmly welcome prime residences to the body of development projects moving forward here despite the global downturn. We work very hard here in St. Kitts and Nevis, ladies and gentlemen. I work hard. Every single member of my cabinet works hard. Our public servants, we demand of them the highest standard and the highest quality. We continue to say that the work ethics in this country must continue to improve if we are really to succeed in competing with the rest of the international community because that's where we are now. We are no longer competing within the region. We are competing globally. And so I want to commend in particular the public servants, those who have worked diligently over the last few weeks to ensure that the necessary processing and approvals have been given on time for this project in particular to have proceeded to where it is today. I want to thank those in particular in Skipper, those who are in the Citizenship by Investment Unit, those who are working in the Development Control and Planning Board, the Ministry of Sustainable Development, those public servants who have been called upon from time to time to accelerate the pace at which we do business, because that is going to be the deciding factor eventually as to whether we, we will succeed competitively or we would fail competitively. And I, I make the point about we working hard because we know that the only thing really that matters is results, quick efficiency in returning results. It has been reported, for example, that our extraordinary efforts have resulted in our own having the highest rate of economic growth in the Eastern Caribbean during the first half of 2013. And this is certainly true. But equally true is the fact that our economy also grew at a greater rate than either the economy of the United States of America, from which so many of our own visitors come, or the Eurozone nations, the origin of for so many of our own tourism arrivals. And this too has helped to undergird the reputation for sound economic management that St. Kitts Nevis has so carefully developed over the years. We continue to make sure that our country remains a prime destination. I commend those who are in the Ministry of Tourism and in the, um, and in the agencies of the Ministry of Tourism who continue to facilitate the ease with which people can get here to St. Kitts and Nevis and also invest and enjoy themselves. Prime Residence Condominium Hotel, which will inject some US $70 million into our economy and will embrace the same high standards in terms of plant and amenities as its currently under construction nearby sister development Imperial Bay Resorts. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I have spoken extensively in recent weeks, both at home and abroad, about my government's commitment to ensuring that St. Kitts and Nevis will be the first sustainable island state in the world. And key to this, as you know, will be the Federation's ongoing forward movement in both the production 
as well as the utilization of green energy. I am most pleased to be able to say that in addition to all that I have already said, green energy, renewable energy, is already an integral part of prime residences design as has been demonstrated by Mr. Lawrence a moment ago. I therefore welcome prime residents to the development thrust now on the way here in St. Kitts and Nevis, and I look forward to a future of constructive relations between this project, the government of the Federation, and the people of our nation at large. And so I say warmest congratulations to all, to all whose efforts are making prime residences a reality and the development of St. Kitts and Nevis also a reality for all of us. God bless you. Thank you very much.